being chronically ill is not glamorous guys like these are just the liquid syringes that I take good morning guys so um, I'm up quite early this morning I didn't actually sleep very well and I was having super bad pain last night with just my joints in general and obviously my hip was playing up as well but despite that, I actually don't feel as bad as what I thought I would this morning. Um, anyway, yeah, so Tom's downstairs setting up my feed. I'm just coming up to get my bag to put it in. Um, and then we're going to go uh, because it says you need to be there like 10 minutes earlier. And our appointment's at 9. And it's 22 now. Luckily, it's only like 5 minutes away, though. So let's go. So, home from the um, opticians, my prescription has changed quite significantly in my left eye, which I knew because from my whole life it's been getting like, from being born, um, it's been getting like slowly like declining and declining and declining where I can't really see much out of the eye at all. Anyway, so I also picked some new frames, which I'm going to pick up next week. Um, so, unfortunately, I didn't really film anything in the opticians. I filmed it a little bit, but I didn't film any of the frames, so I didn't actually show you the frame I picked. But, anyway, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys will like them. They're quite similar to the ones I have now, which... They're quite similar to these ones I have now, except they're like a, um... They've got a different pattern around these edges, but the, the style, like the chunky square look, is similar. Um... She did say that my actual, you know how they take pictures of your eye, she did say the actual eye pictures were, um, the right eye was fine, the left eye had a bit of shadowing on there, but because my left eye is so much weaker, she was basically explaining to me that um, when you are growing up, your eyes learn to work together and like, for example, the left eye does 50% of the work, the right eye does 50%, but because I've always had such a weaker eye, my right eye has always learned to do most of the work. And they're also meant to have a connection between the eyes themselves so they can work together, which mine doesn't have. So, I said, is there anything that I can do now in like my adult life kind of to help it or to fix it? And she goes, no, unfortunately there isn't. I said, there's, so she said, there's no like medical technology available yet or anything like that. She said, the only thing that they could have done like in your childhood was you have an eye patch, which I had. Um, I had an eye patch from about the age of four till six or four to seven or around that on and off to try and strengthen it, um, but it, it didn't work. So there's not really much else they could have done is what she was saying because I was born with this. I can't remember the actual term for it, but basically the older I get, the worse it will get to the point where I would just completely go blind in the eye. There isn't anything that, like, that they can do, which is... It worries me that something's going to happen to my right eye. At the moment, like, I have the slightest little change in my right eye and that's it. Um, but I'm just worried that in the future, if something does happen to my right eye, that I'm going to go blind. Um, which is a really, really scary thought. Obviously, it's not something I want to dive into at the moment. Um, I can still see perfectly fine because my right eye does pretty much 90% of the work. Um, but anyway, the prescription has changed in my left eye quite a bit. Even though I can't see much out of it, it's, you know, seeing something is better than seeing nothing. So I'm grateful for that. Um, but yeah, so I'll be picking them up next week and I'm really excited for you guys to see them. So you, ga you gays? <laughs> oh god. You guys may have noticed that um, I'm looking considerably paler, shall we say. Um, like, this is not even my actual... Like, I'm lighter than this. Like, I've still got a bit of tan on. Um, and you can see how pale I am. So I am definitely going to be um, re-tanning before this weekend. But I'm trying something new. Um, not a new tan. But normally what I do is I put my tan on. Then I sleep in it. And then I wash it off in the morning. But I'm actually going to have a second shower today. Get the remainder of the tan off. Moisturise tonight. Moisturise tomorrow morning. And then put the tan on tomorrow morning. And then wash it off right before I go to bed. But yeah. So I'm going to try that this time around. 
putting the tan on and wearing it through the day and hopefully it won't be as patchy and hopefully I'll be able to get most of the tan off that I've previously got on because otherwise it might come out a bit patchy. Tom's just left for work and he's gonna go to the doctors on the way home and order the medicines that I need. The only thing is a couple of them because they've changed the liquids they aren't on my repeat prescription and the metoclopamide which isn't on my repeat prescription at all because I stopped that and I was only meant to be on it for a few days but we haven't heard back from the hospital yet so um, so he's gonna go in and ask about the uh, to see if we, they've heard back from the hospital because then I can stop my erythromycin and danzatron again because it has been hell without it let me tell you like I'm struggling to keep down my own bile which worries me a lot because my dietitian did mention getting a second tube but an NG to drain my stomach but I also know that if you do that you know your stomach's less likely to work at all than if you've just got nothing in it like at least it's trying to process it because some days I'm okay some days I'm not so um I guess we'll see um but the thing is like I miss food too much like sometimes I just can't help myself and I do eat and then I pay for it big time, um, which again is obviously that's up to me, that's my decision whether I want to do that. But I'm not not going to eat ever again, even if my stomach doesn't work. Like, my birthday's in September and I will most likely probably eat something I like that day. Like, I just, you know, as long as I don't have my party on my actual birthday then I'll probably be fine. But I know my family will probably go out for a meal and I probably will go out with them. Even if it does make me really sick, I don't really particularly care. Like, I just, like, eating is such a social activity. You know, like, people go out and they eat a meal with their friends or the family. Like, it's just, until you have, like, food taken away from you, you don't really understand, like, how, like, much of a part of your life it is. So, sometimes I think it's up to you, you know, you gotta weigh up the pros and cons, so... But again, and that's just my opinion and my choices, you know. And there's a lot of people out there with gastroparesis that can, like, food physically makes them too ill to, to make that choice. Um, I'm luckily that, obviously, my gastroparesis isn't mild, but it's definitely not severe. Um, sometimes I have good days, sometimes I have bad days. On the good days, I can definitely tolerate more, um, like, little bits of food and stuff like that. Um, but obviously, again, it's still impacted my life quite a bit to the point where I actually do need a feeding tube, so... Have a hypo, guys. So the sun's out. Um, I just want to quickly say, I did mention in another video about hypos, um, low blood sugar. If anyone, because I know it can be related to like gastroparesis, and I know it can be related to EDS or Ella's Danlos syndrome, but I'm just wondering, has anyone ever had like GI issues on continuous feeds? having low blood sugar i did just mention it in my post on instagram and quite a few people have gone back to me but i just wanted to see put it out there and see if anyone else has any other issues with it i've been told it might be um post here hang on this this is a, this is this is a, a mouthful post pran prandial hyperglycemia i think that's i'm probably pronouncing it wrong but it basically means like after you eat your blood sugar drops um Cause I'm, but I'm calm continuous feeds, which I'm getting a steady, you know, carb, I'm getting steady sugars kind of thing, so it shouldn't be dropping, but I literally got home from the opticians before, I did forgot to mention it when I updated earlier, but I felt so shaky and my heart was going fast, I thought, oh, maybe it's just pots, and then I was like, wait a minute, I don't really get this shaky with pots, and my whole body was like jittery, so I was like, oh, I, I knew it was my blood sugars then, so I tested it, it was like 3.1 or 3, so... I don't know it's just making me feel so like crappy and stuff and I'm not really sure what to do obviously I do have like medicines that I take to fix it but it's just frustrating that I have to keep you know checking it all the time and worrying about it and I'm not really sure my doctors aren't sure so if anyone has any information or knows someone who's experienced this then comment down below or link me to a page or whatever let me know please hey guys so I just filmed a main channel video for you guys Basically talk about all about my feeding tube, stuff like that, like why I have it, because I know a lot of people who don't follow my vlog channel, um, who watch my main channel, don't necessarily know about my vlogs, so they are a bit confused about why I have a feeding tube, blah 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 blah, 
So I filmed that, basically just talked about my feeding tube, my feeding pump, my feeding bag, like just a couple of, and a couple of questions that I normally get asked, so that will be going up on Friday. And um, I just want to say also, I bought these juicy fruit this morning and I didn't realise that they still sold them in these little silver things. I thought, I was so expecting them to be like a little tiny little square. I was so excited, like I used to buy these as a kid. I'm so excited that they haven't like d changed the design. Like I love the little sachet things that you get. So, little side note. Um. Oh yeah, that's why you're wondering why I got changed because I was filming that video and I didn't really like the top that I had on. Had on. Plus, I spilt feed on it earlier when I was unplugging myself, and I just stopped my feed just then as well, so I can do my lunchtime meds. Um. <laughs> but yeah, so fun times. <laughs> So I just quickly wanted to show you guys, like, because I don't actually really, like, I've shown you me, like, restocking my meds, but you've never even seen, like, half of the liquid ones. So I guess I just wanted to show you guys, like, what it's like to be chronically ill. It's not glamorous whatsoever. Like, medicines are awful. And I'm about to show you how much I have to take right now, and this is just my lunchtime meds, so... Being chronically ill is not glamorous, guys. Like, these are just the liquid syringes that I take like people out there think that being chronically ill is fun because you get to not work and not go to school but it is horrible like this is just one dose and I take these four times a day and this is just the liquid ones I have to take all these tablets as well um so people who think oh it'd be fun to be ill and not go to school or work believe me it is torturous Hey guys, so, um, it's about seven-ish, um, my feed is still going obviously, I mean, I'm constantly feeding, so I'm about to have a shower and it'd be a nice, kind of like a nice break while I'm having a shower and stuff to not be on my feeds, um, but I thought I'd just, I'm sorry, my feed bag is rattling, um, I thought I'd just come on and say goodnight and stuff because not much else is going to happen today um, not much else is going to happen tomorrow Tom went to the doctors and ordered my medicine for me they still they still haven't heard anything from the hospital about gastro team so that means I'm going to have to call them tomorrow and be like look what is going on if cardiology has got the letter this, like the next day they ran me and saying we've had an urgent letter from your GP like here's an emergency appointment if they can sort it out gastro can sort themselves out it shouldn't be this hard to get hold of them it's really important these medicines are really really important in keeping my GI tract running ish and keeping my like nausea under control because at the moment metoclopamine is not doing much at all and I'm being sick way 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 too much than what I should be so but anyway so that's the job for tomorrow Um, yeah so I'm gonna have a shower now I am gonna wash my hair I wasn't originally going to but I'm going to now um, and then I'm gonna do my tan tomorrow, um, and then wash it off before I go to bed, so it's all nice for Friday. When Sophie comes, I'm literally, I'm sorry I keep saying it, but I'm literally buzzing. Um, so, me and Sophie have decided, because for those of you who don't know, Sophie is pretty much one of my best friends, and um, she has an Instagram, at chronicallysophie, if you want to go follow her. Um, we both actually have feeding tubes, hers is a little bit different, hers is an NG, so it goes into the stomach and um, mine goes into my intestines. Now, I literally have just uploaded a video all about my feeding tube, which I will link, so go check that out if you wanna know more about my feeding tube, why I have it and stuff like that, so I'll leave a link down below. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do a chronic illness best friend Q&A, so leave questions down below and we will answer them in a video. We've already asked on Instagram, but obviously, we're going to take a mixture of questions from different platforms. So comment down below any questions you have for us. And try and make it questions, because obviously we both have feeding tubes, so try and make it questions that we can both answer rather than just related to me or her. So, anyway. Love you guys so much. Um, thanks for subscribing to this channel. Please give it a big thumbs up. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow.